Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we are going to continue our blender series by uh, adding in that sh that hole for the shower on the wall. Um, and we're also going to get started with shading. So this is going to be uh, pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. Um, so we're going to start by hitting Shift A and adding in a cube here. And we're going to slide it all the way to the wall. So this is going to be very similar to the uh, how we cut out the window, except we're not going to have it go all the way through. We're going to just have it kind of indenting into the wall. So I'm going to pop into wireframe while on the side view. Remember, you can click in the top right of the window. And we're going to scale down this cube on the x-axis in edit mode. And then we're going to click and drag and kind of get it up centered on the wall. Um, and I'm going to get out of that side view so we can better position it. Now we want it to be close enough to the ground so we're going to kind of reference our human model again while dragging down. See it's that box right there. Um, and then we are going to get back into solid view and then we are going to scale it up a bit by tapping into edit mode and hitting S and then Z. And we're also going to scale it in the Y a bit by hitting S and then Y. So Let's just kind of get moving around and see what looks good. Um, we also want to make sure that it's not poking outside the wall because obviously we don't want it to cut all the way through. So now we're going to click on the wall and we're going to add another boolean and it's going to sit right underneath the first one. We're going to hit the eyedropper tool, select our cube, and then we have to set that to different. So now it's cutting a hole in it, um, but now we need to go to the object properties while selecting the cube um, right here. And then we're object for C, and then we're going to come down to viewport display and set display as to wire so that the object, um, so we can see through the object in the 3D viewport. So you can see there's that hole right there that we cut out. And remember, this is just a Boolean cut, so it isn't actually changing the geometry. It's just a modifier that we haven't applied yet. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good. We don't really have to worry too much about that wall. Um, so later on in this video, we're going to be actually texturing the, the table, or at least starting the models for it. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and select our table here real quick. Um, and we're going to want to single it out, I believe. So let's just give me a second. Yep. So let's click on the table and the uh, room, and let's hit Shift H to single them out. Um, and then we are going to go into the table here yeah so actually we're going so we're going to be using some of these tabs uh, so yeah so actually what we're going to do is we're going to UV unwrap the uh, the room first and how UV unwrapping works is basically you mark the seat the edges um, where you want the shape to unfold and it will unfold similar to like if you were to cut out a piece of paper and then fold it up to like make it a 3d cube it's basically the same principle so what we're going to do is we're going to select this this edge right here on the top corner and sometimes edges cause um, seams in the textures so you either want to make sure they're hard 90 degree angles or they're somewhere out of the camera's reach in this case it's both a hard angle and the top corner is going to be kind of out of the view but it doesn't matter too much since this one we aren't really going to apply a texture to the room so yeah so basically UV texturing is a way to unfold your mesh so you can later apply textures to it so with this edge selected we're going to go up to edge and we're going to hit mark seam and what that will do is it will communicate to blender that we want it to kind of cut like a piece of paper that edge and then we'll unfold it so then we're going to select all edges by hitting A we're going to go up to UV and we're going to click on UV unwrap and you see here, you can kind of see how it has unwrapped our model based off that seam that we told it to cut. So on the top and bottom of that little rectangle there that I'm uh, hovering over is where we cut the seam. And you'll notice how it isn't connected. Um, so yeah, and you'll kind of see here if I go to a face select mode and select a face, that face right there is represented on the UV mesh. So later on when we drop in a square texture here, um, whatever that whatever part of that texture is within that box, that will be our floor. Um, and of course, we're going to be messing with the, with the uh, shaders a bit, so it isn't going to be quite that simple. But in essence, that's usually how simple it is. Um, but yeah, we're going to be making sure that the shader is... We have a couple different shaders on our room for the uh, floor, etc. Um, so now we're going to get rid of our room by clicking on it and hitting H. And then we're going to click on our uh, table and hit period on the numpad to zoom in on it. Um, so we want to prepare this 
for um, textures because we want the granite countertop and the uh, foot uh, the supports to be textured. So first things first, we're going to kind of analyze our image or uh, model and see where we want to mark these seams. Um, so for example, uh, we're going to delete the space off the back of the table since it's actually sticking in the wall and that'll make texturing the table easier. <coughs> And then I think I wanted to delete these cabinets, but I decided to go against it because um, they have that inside geometry as well. Um, so, yeah, but again, I don't think I actually go through with it. So basically, we want to unwrap our table as like we did with the uh, other room. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these this uh, bottom edge of the table. We're also going to select the edge above it in a second. Um, yep, there's that edge, and we're going to go on the other side and select those edges as well. So we're telling Blender we want it to unwrap and cut where those seams are. Um, and since the table isn't actually connected, well, hold on first, we're going to go up to edge with those faces selected, making sure we can check in wireframe frame to see they're all selected. We're going to go up to edge and then we're going to hit mark seam and then when we uh, what we want to do is we just want to select the table so what we're going to do is we're going to go into face select and select the top and we're going to hold down control and hit plus on the numpad and what that'll do is it will um, select every other face and you can keep pressing space until it um, selects them all um, so now that those are all selected we can press u on the keyboard and click on unwrap there and you'll see there's our shape kind of stretched out um, and since it isn't actually connected to the other objects, um, like the table, the legs aren't connected to the table by like vertices or faces or anything, um, we can unwrap it as a separate object and it won't really give us any problems. Um, that's also why we uh, face selected it and then hit control plus to select the connecting faces because um, everything else isn't connected. Um, so you can see how they overlap right now because they're all one object and that's actually going to be fine because we're going to use several different shaders for this object because we don't actually um, we don't plan on exporting this to a game engine. Uh, so now we need to unwrap these cylinders, and they're actually really easy to unwrap since they don't have a, a bottom or top. Um, we can just select a back edge that isn't very visible to the camera, because again, seams sometimes cause um, breaks in the texture unless you're using like Substance Painter to paint your textures. So we're going to select these edges, and then we're going to go Edge, Mark Sharp, and then we're going to uh, face. Uh, we're going to select each of the things, and then we're going to hit Control Plus to select all of the connected faces. Um, and then we're going to press U on our keyboard and unwrap, just like we did with the table. Um, so these are both unwrapped, and again, they're not connected, so they, they are overlapping in the, UV, uh, in the UV thing on the left. When you select all the uh, faces, you can see what they look like. Um, they're all kind of overlapping. Um, and because we're actually not going to um, texture the cabinets, we're just going to apply a shader to them, I'm going to lazily unwrap them which is you, I'm going to select both of them and then hit control plus plus to select everything while holding it down and I'm going to hit U and hit smart UV unwrap and Blender will kind of guess based off how sharp the angles are how to unwrap it. Now this is a very lazy way to do it and it isn't good if you want to seriously texture things but since we aren't even going to apply a texture to them we're just going to apply a shader um, it should be fine. Yeah, and again, you rarely ever want to use smart um, UV unwrap. You want to manually do your scenes, especially for characters and such. Um, so we're done UV unwrapping this one right here. Now all we, all we have to do is add um, textures to it. Um, so that's actually the exciting part. So shading and textures, that's all very fun. So we'll see here in a sec. I'm going to single out the room by clicking on it and hitting Shift-H. And we're first going to shade the room. Now you see we can use the shading tab at the top and it'll put us in that sh in a textured view mode. And we can come over to the right to the properties panel and I'm going to click on the shader property. And I'm going to hit add new shader you saw there. I hit the plus button. So it'll give us a brand new shader. Um, and you can see it's deep by, selected by default and we now have a brand new node on the bottom. And if we go up to the top right we can change between solid, textured, and rendered view as you saw I just did there. Um, and this is that textured node that we just created. So we can tweak all different things about it, the reflectiveness of the object, the color, um, like the textures such as like a tile look or so, or so forth. So I'm going to hit the plus key and add another texture and this is what we're going to make the ceiling and stuff. So we're also going to name these by double clicking on them. I'm going to name the top one um, tile floor. So this will be our tile tile floor. I'm going to double click the other one and name it walls slash ceiling I believe. 
is it'll be our texture for the walls and ceiling. Um, so that's nice and dandy. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to start adding, we're going to start tweaking these shaders. But um, first I believe we turn on an add-on. So yeah, basically we just, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up to edit and I'm going to show you how to turn on an add-on. Uh, so we go to edit preferences and we're going to click on add-ons on the left and then we're going to type in node wrangler right there. We're going to click on the check mark right there and we're going to make sure we hit save preferences and I already have it enabled. And what this tool, this tool has a, a bunch of features, but what it'll allow us to do is automatically connect textures up. So with our principal shader selected right here, and this thing's pretty complex, but um, anyways, we're going to hit Control shift t and it's going to open up a shortcut so where we can go to our textures folder, and all we have to do is select the, um, the coal, the displacement, the normal, and the roughness map, and... Um, when we select all of them, if we go to the top right, and you'll see here in a sec, um, and you can shift click to files to select multiples, by the way. It's just like with vertices and stuff in Blender. Um, so yeah, so basically this is going to set up all of our um, nodes for us, so it's going to be very easy. Um, and I should have a download to all these textures in the description so you can follow along. Um, they're also on a free website called CCO, I believe, or CC0. And they have a bunch of textures that are compatible with Blender. Um, so you can see this is our color texture that we're going to be using. We also have a, a normal map, which looks like this. This basically adds fake depth to our, tech, our uh, object. It's great for optimization. And this is our roughness map. So this is going to be the color or the roughness data that will tell us how, our surface how to reflect things. Um, with black being super reflective and white being not reflective. So we're going to click on principled shader setup at the top right and you'll see it set up every node we need to so it's very easy to add textures in. Um, and they do need the naming conventions to go with it but you'll see it connects our color, our roughness, our normal map, and our displacement um, and it's just that easy. Um, and then from there we can tweak little other things about it. But other than that our tile texture is now set up. Um, and you'll see here I actually uh, swapped, I actually uh, installed the tiles on our wall slash ceiling because on the, if you look to the right of the shading editor, I actually had tile selected. But, uh, anyways, you can see now I'm pointing out the mapping tool, so we can use that to uh, rotate textures and scale them, so we're going to be doing that in a little bit too. But yeah, if you want to learn more about this, I'd highly recommend you uh, YouTube um, Blender Guru and type in uh, Principled Shader because he has a great like 30 minute video explaining what this big giant shader called the principled shader does. Um, it's a very good shader. It's the, it's the type of the thing that Disney uses for their movies. So anyways, kind of relooking over our uh, room here, we're going to make sure that it's unwrapped, um, even though we already did it before. And when we go into textured view, um, I think I'm just double checking everything's fine. And you see there, I noticed the mistake. Um, I got them mixed up. So what I'm going to do here is um, I deleted everything, or no, I believe I copy and paste everything. So I'm going to select everything um, and delete it by hitting X. So that's how you delete things. So I'm going to select everything by clicking and dragging and hitting X. I'm going to go to tile and floor, select that principled shader again. Um, yep, I'm going to hit control shift T and then you can select all those textures and hit OK. And now we should see there's our tile. And look at how cool the reflections are on it. It's like a very realistic texture. Um, and it obviously is too big, and it's on the floors and ceilings, so we're going to be fixing that. But before we fix that, we're going to come to the scale here, and we're going to bump it up a bit because we want the tiles to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to type in 3 for X, Y, and Z. I'm going to change it to 5 and see how that looks. Um, and then we're going to see what it, I think. Yeah, we go up to 7, and I believe we leave it there. So with a scale of 7, you can see how, um, since the texture is also a repeating texture, um, we can scale it a bunch, and it should look fine. Um, so now we're going to go to click on wall slash ceiling, and while in edit mode, we're going to select the three faces of our ceiling and walls. And while walls and ceiling is selected, we're going to hit assign, and you can only do this in edit mode. And basically what this will do is it'll allow us to have two separate shaders for each of our um, for each of our like walls and floors and stuff. So it's very cool. Um, I don't think we actually change walls and ceiling too much because we want the walls to be just like a standard white. 
Um, so yeah, you can see how quickly you can add textures just by uh, using currently uh, in Blender add-ons and stuff. And here I actually insert a point. I'm going to change the render engine to Cycles, which is that realistic ray tracing engine. And you can see it lags my computer a bit, but you can see how realistic that looks when we use uh, like the ray tracing. You know, you see with that with the, the NVIDIA cards nowadays, the RTX, whatever. Um, but you don't have to worry about how to turn on this rendering here right now. I'm going to show you how to do it later on in the uh, other videos when we want to make a final render. So going back to the shading tab here, um, we're just going to kind of look around. Uh, I guess we're going back to the layout tab. I can't remember really what I was doing at this point, but yeah. So basically that's about it for this video um, in the next one we're gonna talk more about shading and stuff um, and I actually get my audio back in the next clips so thanks for watching if you have any constructive comments please leave them below um, and I know these videos are starting to get a little bit faster but again this overlay audio is kinda weird so uh, thanks for watching